So the edit that you just saw, I was able to capture with these pieces of technology. I used the DJI Mavic 2 to capture the drone shots, and I used this little GoPro Hero 7 with this El Grande selfie stick to have Franz kind of filming in and around behind me. And today what I wanted to do is give you guys an insight as to how you can create a GoPro edit for your Instagram feed. number one which I want to touch on straight away is actually having a variety of content to work with. Now you would have seen with this edit there's not just one type of clip and I touched on it with the gear that I was using before there's a variety so I'm using drones to capture big bold wide establishing shots I'm using the GoPro Hero 7 black to capture both hero perspective which is like let's say you're shooting someone that would be the hero and then also a selfie but two types of selfie the selfie stick that I'm holding out in front then the bite mount selfie that I'm holding behind so that gives me a variety of content to work with or for your editor to work with when it comes to actually editing she's getting bumpy here at the very start of my process, I listen to music. That's how I get into the mood of creating edits. Now, editing for me is all about emotion and feeling and that always comes and is evoked through music. So a really good place to start for your edits is to jump on Epidemic Sound or Music Bed. They offer licensed music that you can use, that you can legally use on your Instagram. Feel free to rip um, any song off the internet that you want and publish it on your account, but don't come crying to me if that track gets listed for copyright. That's why I would say to go and start with Epidemic or Musicbed. You can have a listen to the stuff, you can sign up and you can start to download tracks which you can actually use. I'm also going to put in Red Bull Sound Supply and I'm also going to link my Red Bull Sound Supply playlist. I've created a Travel Vibes playlist, so definitely go down there and check out that playlist if you're looking for some tracks. Yes, you have to pay for them. It's 2019, licensing music should be part of your process. If you're not making any money from these edits and you're solely just doing it for leisure or passion, then feel free to just publish whatever you want, take tracks from wherever, don't get too caught up in the licensing side of things, but if this is something that you essentially want to, you know, turn into your job, then I would highly recommend right now by starting to sign up to those music licensing platforms. Wow. Bro, how is it up here? Crazy. First part of my process when I'm editing something like this is to just lay out all of my clips. I've gone out and captured drone shots, I've captured the POVs, or I've captured the selfie shots on my GoPro. Next thing, import them, lay them all out on the timeline. Super simple. So once you've got Adobe Premiere Rush open, I just literally import all of my clips in landscape. I've shot them in 2.7K, 60 frames, or 4K for the drone shots, and I'm just hacking through, trying to find the, the bits that I want. I'm literally using the cutting tool, which is over on the bottom left and I will cut and make incisions so I'm just hacking down and finding sections which are appealing to the eye. I don't want long boring clips, I just want moments of gold. Really get to understand and know how to use the cutting tool. That is your best friend. Before you even know how to do effects, know how to do any of that stuff, just learn how to cut. So start to find the sections of your clips which you think are the most enriching and the most valuable or have the most energy or have the least energy. Whatever vibe you are going for, which you're evoking from the track that you've selected, you know, that's what you're doing right now. You're using your senses, your feelings, to marry up the music with the visuals. So, we're gonna go through and we're gonna find the clips that we think are gonna be best for our edit. The track that I've selected has quite high energy, so I'm trying to dig through my content and find motion. Let's have a look at this clip, for example. I switched the selfie stick from the left to the right hand. That is the nugget of gold that I want. The camera is moving, there is motion, there is energy and flow. I don't particularly want just me floating down or drifting a static shot. I want motion in the clips. Now you'll notice that when I start editing, I'm editing in 16 by 9, which is... I guess the same screen size that you're watching right now. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I might want to use this particular edit for my Facebook or for YouTube or for other aspect ratios. So I'm going to start the edit in 69, then we're going to crop it down to 4-5 aspect ratio, which is perfect for Instagram. So once I've hacked through all of my clips and found all of my pieces of gold nuggets, I just shuffle 
all those clips to the left of my timeline and essentially create a bank of content that I'm gonna be editing down further. I'll delete out all of my excess content and I'll start to marry up and work on the storyline of this edit with my track. One of the most important parts of an editor is, you know, finding that variety and harmony within your clips. So whilst you're going through trying to find your little gold nuggets of your favorite clips, be critical, but also be forgiving. And when I say be forgiving, like you don't have to cut so tightly when you're doing this initial chopping process. Just find clips, roughly cut them and cut it down to about a minute. Now that my audio track's there, I'm gonna find a very specific point of that audio track. I'm not just gonna go from the start of the audio track, but a part that I think is cool, a part which has energy, and a part of it which I really feel like is harmonious with the visuals. Once I've found the gold nugget in the audio track, that's where I'm gonna start, and I'm also gonna look for an out, because I wanna have a start and a finish, and I don't want it to go for too long. Once the track is laid down, it's your job to now create a visual story. You might want to write a narrative and voice over something to explain what's going on in the clip, or you might just want it to be a visual story. For me, this particular edit was just a visual story, so I wanted to have a big, bold, wide opening shot. Luckily, this was at sunrise to start my edit, and then I'm just going to go into that experience of snowboarding down the mountain. This being social content, it just has the in being wide, going into tights, it's one experience, it's kind of like one thought, you're digesting this snowboarding experience. That's what I'm offering here. Visually, it just goes from wide to set the scene, then it goes into the experience, and it finishes at the same point of being wide. I come out with that loop. A little tip for audio is that I'm going to use a whoosh sound effect to both enter the clip and exit the clip. And the beauty of this is also that if you cut the whoosh sound effect in half, you're able to create a seamless loop so that hopefully the audience will continue watching this package over and over again. A really great way to continue creating energy and flow in your edit is to speed ramp. You'll notice the start of this clip is at 245%, then it goes into 100%, and then it goes down to 50% in terms of speed. So it's very simple, just cut the clips up and change the speed accordingly. Just click on the right, slow them down or speed them up. Once the story has all been laid down and the edit is really sinking and pumping, you feel like the rhythm and the energy is there, you've played around with the timing of the clips, it's now time to just get give that video a color grade and then we're gonna change the aspect ratio. Premiere Rush makes color grading really simple. Start by clicking on the colored icon and opening the colored window and it will give you a range of presets. You can go through and have a look at how those presets look on your clip. Or what I like to do is to select none and just start to manually edit. How I like to approach this is just to reduce the dynamic range. So as I'm going through my sliders, I'm literally just trying to focus on certain colors like the whites and the blues. I'm not trying to show you every color in the color spectrum. I'm just trying to highlight those that I think are most important. Once I'm happy with that, I will go ahead and create a preset because I want to share this same color grade that I've done across all the same drone clips that have this color. Go through each of your different types of clips, like the GoPro clips, the selfie clips, and color grade each one accordingly. If you're happy with the color grade, you can create more presets and share that same color across your different kinds of clips. Changing the aspect ratio is super simple. All I have to do in Adobe Premiere Rush is just click this one button bottom left of that home screen and bam, away, there it is. You might notice when you do this that some of your clips are smaller than others. So all you have to do is make sure you go and reframe each clip so that they're approximately 70% of the nine by 16 aspect ratio screen size so that when we come into Instagram, it will fill the full four or five frame. Unfortunately, with Adobe Premiere Rush, there isn't already a four or five framing. So the best way that I've found to do this is just to export in nine by 16 and upload to Instagram because Instagram will cut it into four or five. It's really simple, but just make sure that your content fills 70% of the screen and those black bars, which are at the top and the bottom of your edit will just disappear when you go to publish it.
guys, I hope this video has given you some ideas as to how you can go about using simple software like Adobe Premiere Rush on your desktop or on your mobile to create a GoPro lifestyle edit. Again, recapping this video, think about experiences, think about how the music has an effect on the body of work and have fun with it. Again, it's experimentation. The more of these edits that you make and the more that you continue to go through this process, the better your work will become. If you guys have found this editing video helpful, punch that thumbs up button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's all about travel creativity and hopefully there's some inspiration here. I'll link a bunch of editing tutorials up here in the cards or you can just check out some more editing tutorials in the description. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe, turn post notifications on and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Jaya. Peace!